let's uh, talk about uh, what Keir Starmer, as we've discussed, I'm really keen to hear what you think. I, I just think the Prime Minister of Great Britain, at the moment of armistice, you know, 11, the 11th of the 11th, you know, uh, the saddest moment, I think he should be in Britain. He should have been here. He could have gone to France afterwards. Instead, he takes part in nothing against the French and their, uh, their own remembrance ceremonies. But uh, that should be for the French and the French leader, not the British leader. The British leader should be with his people, shouldn't he? On Remembrance Day, on, on, on the 11th of the 11th, uh, at 11 a.m. What do you think? 03444991000. But uh, what was he also up to over there, moving amongst his EU mates, his beloved EU? Uh, him and Macron, uh, old pint size puny boy there uh he they've been uh plotting that uh, so like a last ditch plot to derail trump's efforts to scale back american support for ukraine now we don't really know what donald will do what i would say about donald trump yes a lot of his campaign was based on i'll stop throwing billions at Zelensky, but you have to wait with him will you with donald trump uh Note what he does, not necessarily what he says. He says a lot of things he doesn't do. Uh, but he did say uh, that he's going to listen to the American people who are just saying, hang on a second, we're struggling, cost of living crisis, and you're giving billions to this country we don't even know where it is yeah. in Eastern Europe. Why, you know, why is that? There's a reason for that. I get it. You know, you've got to keep uh, Putin in check. However, uh, uh, Starmer and Macron are plotting or they're going to try to persuade the current president lest we forget joe biden for his last few weeks to uh give zelensky permission to fire i said it's months it's not until january the 20th that mm. uh trump actually takes over to, th anyway they're going to try to persuade biden to give zelensky permission to fire uh, american supplied storm shadow missiles deep into russia i mean these are destructive missiles they could make a big difference so far uh, biden has railed back from that uh they want Biden to uh, give the green light to Zelensky and Ukraine being able to use these weapons. Uh, meanwhile, Whitehall sources say that Kia, uh, Free Gear Kia, is very keen uh, to, and I'm going to quote this, uh, to make the most of the time between now and January the 20th. That's when Donald Trump takes over the White House. So it's as if, particularly with this Biden plan, that uh, Keir Starmer is going to use this next three months to undermine President Trump. Yeah. That, that, that's not wise, is it? Well, given that the special relationship, so-called, is on tenterhooks because of the way that the likes of Angela Rayner and Yvette Cooper and David Lammy, mm. uh, etc., have spoken about Trump in the last few months and years, uh, you would think that Keir Starmer now would do anything he could to try and mend that relationship before Trump actually uh, becomes president. Uh, but no, instead, yes, we have this, which of course won't go unnoticed by Trump, Starmer and Macron effectively undermining what Trump has already said he's going to do. Um, now, it shouldn't be lost on us that these missiles are made, guess where? between Britain and France. Mm -hmm. So there might be a commercial angle here, because I suspect they're not that cheap, um, but I would hope that there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, but the fact remains that Donald Trump has said, as you rightly point out, that he wants to see a de-escalation. He actually also said in his campaign that he would solve the Ukraine-Russia conflict on day one of his presidency, the day after inauguration. Now, that might be a slightly bold statement, but what I think he means is this. If you continue to fund the Ukraine war to the yeah. tune of half a trillion pounds, yeah. which is what all of us now, Britain, America and certain yeah. other European yeah. nations, not all of them have spent, what will happen is stalemate. We're now getting towards year three of this conflict. You will see stalemate continuing and continuing and continuing. So what Trump's saying, and I think there's some sense to this, is look, if we withdraw our money, you're putting them both in a corner, Putin and Zelensky, on the basis that something's going to have to give. Of course, what has to give, I'm afraid, and this won't be popular, is territory. Because one thing is for sure, Zelensky and Putin have massive egos. And on that basis, neither of them yeah. are going to give in. Putin is definitely not going to give in, even if you bomb Moscow. He will not back down. So the only way to do this is get to the negotiating table. Zelensky will only get to the table, I suspect, if you take his money away from him, because then he'll be forced to. Mm. And then you're going to have to annex the Ukraine, I'm afraid. That's the only way forward. Well, well, uh, I mean... In terms of the territory uh, that 
uh, Putin wants. I mean, my, my feeling about this would be if we just stand around saying, well, you know, uh, you know, how would you like it if Russia invaded Britain? Which bits of Britain would you give to him and all that? Of course you go, well, we wouldn't give any, we wouldn't give any. But he's not invading Britain. He's not invading America. He has invaded the Ukraine uh, and there are several uh, territories that he wants. Now, if we want this war to go on forever, then we continue to just throw billions of pounds at Zelensky. It won't stop. Uh, and uh, let him say to Putin, you will never, uh, we will never accept you having any of our territory. If, if it's ever to end this war, I'm afraid there is going to have to be some kind of compromise. And that may involve ceding some territory to Putin. Because if we don't have that, this, I'm not taking sides, you know, this has nothing to do with taking sides. But if we don't have some kind of compromise, this war will never end. And uh, young uh, men and women are dying in their hundreds of thousands, you know, at the moment, as we speak. And surely, surely, just saying, well, how would you like it if you wanted Cornwall? Well, OK, you can say that. Uh, uh, and we wouldn't like it, but, you know, there are very different circumstances over in Eastern Europe, and perhaps that is what we have to do. Uh, but uh, Donald Trump will not be happy about what... I mean, does, does Starmer have any judgment at all? No. I mean, this follows, <laughs> as, we discussed, as we discussed earlier, um, Russell, you know, him sending, him sanctioning, Keir Starmer sanctioning... Uh, sending a hundred Labour activists to the key swing states in America to campaign for Kamala Harris during the election uh, campaign, the presidential election campaign, only about a month ago. Now, uh, that you know why he did that? Because in his socialist left-wing mind, he could not even begin to conceive of even the remotest possibility so that win. that old evil right-wing racist Donald Trump would win. Mm. Uh, of course, lovely left-wing Kamala was going to win. That's his worldview. Well, guess what? She didn't. And now you've got a president who won't forgive you for that. And now he's doing this. But he's also play, he was playing to his left-wing crowd, yeah. which is to say, you know, I'm going to support hundreds of Labour activists to go to the US. Uh, you know, that, that's all part of his kind of ideological approach to everything. The, the, the other reason for Starmer's misjudgment here is when the President of the United States becomes Donald Trump in January next year, uh, you're going to have this huge problem of trade. So Trump has said that he's going to impose tariffs on goods from other countries into the US. It has been hinted just today that the US might give special dispensation to the UK. So in other words, our goods, our Range Rovers and our Fortnum Mason hampers and our services will not then have a 10 to 20% tariff put on them. That's very, very important for mm. those companies and those people that export well, to the United uh, States. Yeah, so If we get it. Well, but this is the problem. If we keep antagonising Donald Trump before he becomes president, what do you think the chances and the likelihood of Donald Trump acquiescing to a trade deal that's specific mm. and better for the UK? UK rather yeah. than everybody else. Yeah. He's just going to say, do you know what? Forget about it. You yeah. can have a 20% tariff put on everything that you sell us. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Chancellor Doom, Rachel Reeves, with Robert Reeves, uh, this, is, this is her response to the possibility, a very real possibility, uh, that Trump will impose tariffs uh, on trade between Britain and America. The way Starmer's going on, he will. He said he'll do it all over the world, up to like 15%, isn't it? No, 60% for China. 60% 60 for China. Uh, now, he, there's a possibility he might exonerate us. We, we may uh, get away with it, but not the way Trump uh, uh, Starmer is going. Uh, but Chancellor of Doom, uh, Robert Reeves, she says, this is her response, she will oppose Trump's plans to slap trade tar tariffs on Britain. She will oppose that. That will do. That's about as useful as Keir Starmer using drones yeah. to stop the boats. Oh, yeah. isn't well, it? Great, Rach. You can <laughs> no oppose them all you like. No it one won't cares. Stop him doing it, will it? Really, is that the best you can do? Yes. Well, uh, we're against that. Well, you would be, wouldn't you? Do, do you think Rachel Reeves? Um, the, the the disappointment of Rachel Reeves is the thing that keeps Donald Trump up at night. I suspect not. Oh God. <laughs> but you know, is that the best you can do? We will oppose Donald Trump's plans to impose tariffs on Britain. We will oppose them. Yeah, and he'll go, oh, you're opposing them, are you? 
Hmm, see what difference that makes. It's yeah. pathetic. It is pathetic. It's pathetic. Uh, plus, we've got all these other cabinet ministers who've called him all sorts of names. You know, honestly, as I said earlier, our relationship, the special relationship, I would suggest is probably already in the toilet, uh, but our relationship with America is on a knife edge thanks to these student politicians who incredibly are now running, or I should say, mismanaging the country.